It's a great day here at Vestment where we create performance assessments, BI dashboards, and decision analytics to help companies make better decisions, reduce costs, and grow their profits. We hope this SlideShare vlog will help you have a great day too. If you're still trying to manage provider performance using just the contract terms, it's really not enough. We've found six ways you need to track provider performance that really help you get the most out of your strategic sourcing, vendor management, and supplier development. We're going to take a look on the following slides. The provider's key personnel nowadays are really your key personnel. It's these talented individuals you contracted with to labor with you day by day, side by side on your special initiatives and their actions directly impact you and your customers. So personally and professionally, you're really tied to their technical decisions and expertise in ways that go beyond uh, the contract's terms and conditions. And in turn, your performance monitoring then needs to change as well. It's too often that the contract's reporting metrics are status green, and yet you're really dissatisfied with the provider's performance. So investing attention on tracking your provider's key contributions is really going to help you with near-term outcomes and make better long-term business decisions. That's really where this uh, template comes in. It's designed really to help you figure out which measurement areas matter most. It's all about relationship building with your providers and partners who are hopefully, hopefully helping to seek the same uh, outcomes as you and, and ultimately exceed your expectations in doing so. So these six areas we trained as measurement critical themes really help make a difference and be the foundation of a scorecard. You can customize this template and you should be doing that to adapt it based on your business needs and your performance areas that matter most. There's two steps in the process. The first is really to provide a, a response to the questions that we've prompted in the tool that follows. And answering each question as it pertains to the provider that you want to monitor uh, is really going to help you. The second then is to determine whether it's a quantitative or qualitative focus that you need uh, on that area of interest. So quantitative things are very common in the contracts. They're going to be metrics around uh, penalties or SLAs or uh, some kind of of a count of something that is coming from the provider, but often it's a miss that we don't have enough qualitative ways of actually pulling that through, which should also be outlined as how you're going to implement it. Those include things like review meetings, communication, or even training that you're going to need to conduct with or uh, for the provider for them to be successful. By outlining these performance areas, it's ultimately going to help you be better. So in the first area is around strategy. You really have to start with this as a foundation. It's so common to have that us-them mentality, and that creates a combative relationship with your suppliers and the vendors. It's the opposite of what you want. We well, really want to embrace them as partners because partners, they want to reciprocate in goal sharing and help you actually in your own success. So ask yourself these kinds of questions for what you're trying to get from the provider in terms of their service, how can they share in your vision? How can they align objectives with yours? How can the relationship become a win-win for mutual benefit? Some of the things you see in response often here include examples like top, top meetings that are going to be set up among leadership between uh, your side and the providers so that you can come together and have a meeting of the minds, perhaps in a quarterly review meeting. Another might be setting up a way of reviewing other operational reports that are uh, outside of the vendor's performance uh, for you, but things that you want them to know about the business so they ultimately are a good partner. The next area is about process. This is all about addressing the method and manner by which the provider's performance is delivered. If they're really going to be a key part of your operation, their reliability is key. So how are they using quality management principles that is ultimately going to impact their performance consistency? So you really need to set these criteria up and figure out what are the tangible and intangible contributions that are going to really matter to make them a solid performer for you. So again, to meet your needs for this provider service to you, when is it expected that the provider should follow specific routines or procedures? How is the provider going to address issues and make process corrections? And how are you both going to incorporate those into your processes? So a typical response here would be including things like setting up uh, the review of your existing procedures and sharing of materials, including your training with the provider, so you can see and they can see uh, where you are as a starting baseline. From there, the provider is going to ultimately probably change things, and they need to know where they can change those things and improve upon them. The third area is around uh, metrics. Metrics here is clarifying what you need from the provider and how you're going to measure it. It's really risky to just focus on the service levels that are going to be in the contract 
because ultimately those are mandated and, and they're going to be tracked and you're going to see those but looking just at the SLAs alone you may have missed opportunities for the provider to de determine best practices and desirable results so you really want to look at your metrics in some new ways and you may want to ask yourself some of these kinds of questions are there quality thresholds that need to be defined and understood uh, by the provider are there parameters set for measuring the meaningful contributions uh, to achieve the quality that you need? And are there metrics uh, to track that progress and enable course correction? So common things you see here in a response would be, um, what are the existing performance tracking uh, and metrics in areas that you have that you can actually share in a very transparent way with the provider? And be truthful about the areas that you're proud about and areas that you need to have improvement. Indeed, the vendor or a provider might themselves have some ways of improving that. Next area is all about actions. So here you're securing the uh, appropriate talent from the provider for consistent performance. It's no doubt that you probably met some of the provider's top people that led uh, you, for you up to hiring them for the, the work it was that you've contracted with them for. But are you still getting that talent actually on the engagement day in and day out? Uh, if not, you really could be turning your wheels trying to um, get people up the learning curve about your organization and the way that work needs to be done. You don't want to become a training ground just for the provider's new talent as uh, the experienced talent is constantly moved off. So here, ask yourself these kinds of questions. What are the in-role skills and abilities that you're actually going to need to see from the provider's team? Can you describe situations where that talent is needed and be able to demonstrate a unique intellect or, or insights that you're going to need for them? And what will you expect the provider's talent to actually be involved in in your business decisions and processes? So outcomes here, responses here would be things like a racy model for roles and responsibilities needs to be created. Identifying use cases from your past experience that the vendor really needs to know about so they can meet your expectations for performance. The next area is about maturity. Here you're looking at actually getting uh, the delivery of what is promised from the actual engagement. It's really more than just a passing audit of volume and turnaround times that will be in the contract, but you're looking at how the work was done and at what price. You could be having a pyrrhic victory where the outcome was what was needed, but your own staff was pulling their hair out. There was a lot of headaches. Um, there was a lot of heroics being performed to actually pull that through. That's not, not really what you want. So to meet your need for the provider service, how will you communicate about operating issues? What are the intangibles that the provider needs to successfully implement their service and how can the provider's resources be involved to provide greater benefit to you? Here you want to look at establishing the communication channels, both formal and informal. That would be a common response here so that you know what you're, you're going to be signing up for and how you're going to communicate once the engagement is underway. You also want to reduce the perceptions of end runarounds when something goes wrong, how something is escalated so that uh, the appropriate levels of leadership are involved with the decision making uh, every step of the way. The last area is loyalty and this is really about deciding whether or not you'd want to work with the provider again. It's very common now, of course you ask your customers, would your customers uh, want to uh, buy your, your service again or would you um, would they be recommending uh, you to a friend or colleague? But how about what your feeling is about the providers that are working for you today? They're really in a very strategic function, and it's critical to gauge your loyalty to those providers so that would you provide, would you hire that provider again? Would you recommend that provider to a friend or colleague in your organization that needs to use them again? So ask yourself these kinds of questions. How are you going to judge the seamless service and improve business continuity with that solution provider? What counts as the provider's value adding capabilities that improve your performance? What's needed to build consistency and trust with that provider? Some responses here that would describe uh, for yourselves uh, what does a, a successful engagement look, look like really beyond just uh, hitting the SLAs of what's in the contract or sharing um, the value propositions that could go beyond the metrics that are in the contract, things like flexibility or effectiveness or customer satisfaction that's really important to you or your function. Well, we hope this was helpful uh, to walk through this uh, vlog slide share. Uh, about the six ways that you need to measure provider performance. We have lots of great tools and ideas and other tips. Join us over at Vestment or see a demo of our dashboards working uh, to help our clients do exactly these kinds of things today.